Welcome to this demonstration on wax wraps, brought to you by Sunshine Coast Council through the Living Smart program. Hi, I'm Natasha Odgers from Natural Connections Wax Wraps Workshops, and I'm gonna to show to you a very simple process on how to make wax wraps with only two ingredients and an iron. So wax wraps are particularly good for saving use of single use plastics. They're a product we can use every day in the household, make from home, and also give them as gifts whenever we like at the drop of a hat. Did you know 40% of plastic in the world is packaging, used once and then discarded? So that means this wax wrap and the use of all wax wraps are a fantastic way to address single use plastic waste. There's many good reasons to use wax wraps. They're sustainable, they're biodegradable, they're recyclable, they're antifungal and antibacterial with the beeswax component. They're fantastic for preserving food. So compared to cling wrap, they actually preserve food longer because they're not transparent, so they don't let that air and the, the light through and they've got a nice thick covering to really hold that food um, nice and fresh inside. So they're also a very fun and creative thing to do. Uh, you don't need to have any creative bone in your body. They are something that anyone can do just by following a simple process. And it's a wonderful way to upcycle. You can use this as a way to bring to new life material that you may have at home that you've loved and haven't known what to do with or even clothing that you may not fit so well but you love that pattern on the material so it's you can pull together all kinds of things you can also go to op shops um, i find doona covers pillowcases wonderful and also um, even community groups so boomerang bags, sewing groups, they often have offcuts that you can try and find and see if, they, um, see if they have any to spare that you can put to good use. So ways to look after your wax wrap. Basically, you can just hold it under some water or put it in a container of water, cool water or lukewarm water, soapy water or non-soapy water, it depends on how dirty they are. Just with a soft sponge, rub it over gently and and it'll show up nice and clean. They uh, last for six to 12 months of regular use. So they, um, the good thing is that uh, even if that comes to a point where they're starting to age, we can just redo the process that we're going to do in this demonstration and they'll be as good as new. For storing, they can be used just um, stored in the pantry, in your shelves, uh, in the fridge over your food, and even in the freezer. The freezer, it's best to just keep them in there for, for one month. Now, there's a whole range of shapes and sizes um, that you can have with wax wraps. So we've got big squares for things like sandwiches. We've got small squares for putting over pieces of um, fruit. And we've even got circles that are wonderful for um, salad bowls. And if you like it, you, if you have a piece of material that's got a feature, say like the tree at the back here, you can cut that out to shape and make it a little bit interesting. So there's a whole range of uh, uses here I'll just give you a demonstration of. One that's not so commonly used is actually flowers. So you can have give someone a gift of flowers by giving an extra gift at the same time. If you have a jar without the lid, you can just simply pop it over and you just press it down. And it just fits nicely and there's your jar. For half cuts, say for an avocado, lemons, all kinds of things, anything small, just a small piece and sit it on. You can also choose to wrap it up a little bit. But I find actually out of all the wax wraps, it's the small ones that I use the most. Lettuce or other big things, cabbages, that kind of thing. You can just wrap it around. Fantastic way to save using, storing it in those plastic bags. Things like pumpkin um, and potatoes, all those big things that you just usually have, um, have another quantity of in the fridge. Just pat it down, fold it in, and it just sticks to the fruit perfectly. Now, melons is a classic. Who always has half a melon in the fridge? So some people like to uh, put them on plates or whatever. I find just putting them like this, sitting it down, 
and there's your melon all ready to go holds really well any kind of melon or any large fruit and vegetable works perfectly sometimes you just have something small like half an apple or half a lemon something like that so wonderful also good if if you have a child in it with a lunch box that they don't usually eat a whole apple that's a great way to preserve those cheese butter anything like a big block that's perfect you can just take away the plastic and cover it up and that lasts perfectly and also we have uh, bowls so great way to store anything of big quantities in your bowls also looks really nice when you're going to a dinner party or a picnic something like that okay so what do you need to make wax wraps first of all oil so just coconut oil, pure coconut oil, doesn't matter what brand. Um, I find that the coconut oil is the um, best thing to use because it's just found in your supermarket. We don't need to go looking for all of these other products. They are around, you can choose to have those other ways of doing things, but I always go simple is best. So just the straight coconut oil that hopefully you've got in your pantry. And the other main ingredient is the wax. So just pure beeswax. There's two different ways that I'm going to show you today. One is with the grated down wax that comes from a block. And the other is beeswax sheets. Now these are fantastic. These are actually used for in beehives, but they're also that classic beeswax candle that's wound up. Um, that's what those, those are made from. So um, they're a wonderful easy way to do it with less mess than, than grating. Also a little bit safer to save chopping those knuckles. Now you can use pine resin. A lot of them use a lot of beeswax wraps use pine resin and they're often in the ones that you buy in the shops. But I choose not to for this. One reason is the pine resin actually needs to be heated to a very high temperature and we're only using a low heat iron in this process. So that's the main reason not to use it, but I find it um, it doesn't matter at all. There are ways to make wax wraps where you just use wax. So the wax gives the tackiness, the oil gives the pliability, and, um, and then the resin, if people were to use resin, uh, I've found it gives a little bit extra tackiness, but really there's not much difference. I find these wonderful to use. Okay, we also need scissors. So uh, just plain scissors or pinking shears. Pinking shears just make things look very nice like a gift at the end if you're giving them away. We need a spoon or a paddle stick uh, for smoothing the oil out. Either way, I'll show you both ways. And baking paper. And also we need a towel. So the towel is for uh, making sure that any wax that comes through is um, taken and absorbed in. Now make sure that it is a towel that you, you don't want to save because you won't be getting that towel back. It is almost impossible to wash out wax that drips through the towel. Okay, so there's a few demonstrations I wanna show you before we start of how to use wax wraps. Okay, so one is a cone. I'm gonna show you how to make this. One of the materials also that's handy to use is calico. So when I was saying before, we need 100% cotton material uh, and calico. For those that aren't quite sure if your material is cotton, it's a good idea just to hold it up to the light or sunlight and see if, see if it has some shine. Uh, and it's also usually got more of a raw texture to it. Here is a sample of a cone. So we've got a nice set of um, nuts and mixed things. We've also got material that's had some painting on it. So that's another example of, of material as well, is you can get really creative. There's a whole range of ways you can get creative with your material. And you can just fold that down and there's your cone. So to make it, all we do is we've got a piece, we just fold it over, hold two ends together, fold it over, and then fold the top over, press it all down, wrap it round and wrap the bottom around. There we go. So you can have it like that. You can fold it over. You could have all kinds of like cut um, vegetables or anything like that all through there. Wonderful. Okay, now we also have sandwiches. 
So here's a sandwich wrap. We can just open it up and there's a sandwich. We can also use it as a pocket for any kind of snack and I'll give you a little demonstration of how that works. Okay, so we've got one straight piece of material, one square, we just fold it over and then we fold one side in, give it a press, another side in, give it a press. Now there is a little pocket in here that you can fold that into and then fold that over. Open it up and there's your pocket. You can fold it over, have it like that. If you've got a sandwich or whatever in there, you can just simply fold it over like that. And there's the fold. You can also do little pockets. So here is a pocket of lunchbox treats and we can sit it like that and I'll show you how to make that one. Okay, so we just fold it over once. We fold it twice over on the sides. And there we go. To finish off, just fold it over the top. Press it down and you've got a wonderful little snack for your lunch boxes. If you like to have rolls in your lunch, we can just do a simple lolly turn, simple like that. Now one other use is actually having them as gifts. So as a little kid's activity, you can make these boxes just out of um, paper plates and you can do your wraps, put material around them, make a little assortment and they're just a really cute little gift to give to family and friends. One last thing is a clever little box we've got here. So that is something where you can do, put things in for things like um, makeup, so it's waterproof on the bathroom bench, um, stationery, whatever, whatever you like really, but that's a wonderful little box. And one last, one last thing to show you how you could make a simple sandwich wrap is if you've got uh, a small sandwich in there, you can actually bring them over, bring them over, fold them down like that, bring them over on the sides and just stick them down. So there's many, you can use that for just about anything and I do that most frequently, is just wrap anything around just like it is a present. And also if you're going on traveling and you need something to put your soaps in or something or your makeup, um, you can also wrap it around like that as well. Okay, so let's get into it. So I'm going to bring across the towel, lay it flat, put your paper down like that, and then we're going to get a bit of material. So that's an 18 centimetre squared, which is fantastic for things like melons. Okay, so I'm going to sit it down. One thing to remember is that um, we don't want any seams. So if you have seams, they are not going to stick that well to any surface that we're trying to stick to. So we'll just simply snip, snip that off. Discard the seam. Grab some coconut oil. I'll show you with the spoon first. So for this amount, we'll use a little bit less than half a tablespoon. And this is one process that we do get our fingers into the process because it's a wonderful way just to mix it all around and we get our fingers and hands beautiful and soft by the end of the process. Now this is one thing that we don't want. We don't want to have a clump, a clump of oil like this. So we want to just mix it round and smooth it over. If you've got too much, it's just fine to keep smoothing it off, off onto the thing, onto the paper. Okay. Okay. Now I've got a lot. We're going to smooth that off. And you know what? It's heating up with the light, so it's a little bit more uh, a little bit 
more clumpy than it normally is. Okay, so now we're going to put some wax that I've grated on here and you're just going to spread it like a pizza. We don't want it too high. Just a little bit like this. Okay, so that's about right. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't, you can just have some kind of covering over the top. And now we're going to put the second piece of uh, baking paper over the top. The iron is on a low setting, so the synthetic setting. You can do it slightly up if, it's, if you find it's not working, but not too high because we don't want any houses burnt down. And then we're going to just put it over the top. And you can see already that that is starting to melt. So what we want is a nice covering of melted wax over the whole thing. So when it gets warm, when, when it gets right, when you get a real roll on, it gets very quick. So you can already see we want, it's all down. We don't want to smooth out the oil and the wax past the material. So no big movements, just little ones. You can nose in with the front of the iron and that's covered. Now it's all clear. And what I'm gonna do is just flip it over to make sure that it's through the whole thing. So just a bit there. Now I'm going to put the iron down and take this up straight away. There we go. So that is a perfect wax wrap. There's no clumps on it. There's no of uh, material uh, that can get a bit furry if it hasn't taken to the wax. It's just a straight run of of the, um, the wax wrap there. Okay, so I'm gonna show you another. The good thing about this is that I can just put this straight down. It's cool enough. Other methods, there's a lot of hot uh, material and you can't hold them with your hands. So here I can just put it straight down and it's ready to go. Okay, one more sample to show you uh, a few differences. Okay, so we get another piece of material. This time I'm going to use a paddle stick. Little bit of oil there and I'm just going to smooth it over. Now the material, there's different kinds of material um, with the cotton. Some are thicker, some are thin. I personally find the thinner material uh, takes best but you can use all. It just needs, sometimes it just needs a little bit more working. Okay so now we're going to use some of the some of the wax from the sheets. So all I need to do is take about a two to four centimeter piece. When you're using a smaller piece of material, use a smaller piece of wax. And we're going to just cover the material with wax. Just like a pizza again. This probably is a bit more like the salami pieces. And you can cover it over about half half. Now make sure that there's nothing sitting on and as I said before remember to make sure that the material is pre-washed because once it's set in that's it. No going back. Okay make sure there's no bits of um, of cotton, loose cotton on there or anything like that. Doesn't matter what shape you do the the wax you can just get the pieces because it's all going to melt down anyway. Okay, so that's the, that's the, about the amount of wax that you need. Put the paper down and off we go again. So we're just going to sit that down, let it melt in. Now the bigger the size, the more work you're going to need to do because once that starts to melt in, it can cool on some of the other pieces, other areas of the material. So you need to just let it get through to a point where all of that wax and oil is evenly spread. And once it starts to cool, it can actually hold onto the, onto the baking paper. So you wanna make sure that everything's warm. There we go, it's transparent, we'll flip it over. We'll just give a, a short run over that to make sure it's all in. We'll do an instant flip back, pick it up here, it's not too hot, hold it up and there's a perfect wrap. 
Okay, now if you did have wax that was starting to sit on the paper, that means that it's too cool and also it could mean that there's uh, too much oil there. So do less oil and a little bit more wax. Now what we can do is give it a little dry, sit it down, check that there's no um, check that there's no bits of material hanging off, so you might want to give a little bit of a snip. You can also still cut it after it's been waxed, that's totally fine. Now sometimes you can have a little bit of wax build up. So see here, it's got that um, build up of wax down the bottom. That often happens. So what we do is we can just smooth it with our fingers to a point. Smooth it out. You can also rub it into that paper when it's still warm. And if you're finding that it's, it's quite a lot, especially on those larger pieces of material, just do the process again. Simple as that. I often find that's the best way. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, after that, you can just use that paper towel to take off on the iron. And that's a wrap. So make sure you ditch that plastic Use and make the wraps, gift them to your friends and others, and do your piece to look after the environment. Have fun.